Good morning, class. Now, I got your test results in, and I gotta say, I am impressed. Y'all passed. Now, a couple of you actually passed by the skin of your teeth. Nevertheless, you passed, all of you. So give yourself a pat on the back. Okay, now stop patting yourself on the back. Sit the hell down. We got a topic to go over. And it is going to be about space shuttles. Yep, the most common of all vehicles in space. A space shuttle. So, the space shuttle, in all its many variants and modifications, is perhaps one of the most widely used starships in the galaxy. Under statement of the century. Most common models have atmospheric wings, good life support, and cargo hold. It is capable of hauling one standard cargo container or a small ground vehicle if needed. Most shuttles are 50 meters long and 20 meters wide, and their atmospheric wings can fold and conserve space when docking on a space station or a big starship. Kind of neat. A craft like that can be crewed by a few, uh, as few as two or as many as five crewmen. Those can be specialized pilots and engineers uh, commanded by a proper captain or just a bunch of unruly colonists, whichever, uh, who are off to conquer the surface of a distant planetoid. Their shuttle cargo uh, hold full of brim, full to the brim with supplies. Now, I think the vessel that my ancestors came on when they got to their planet was Pooch. Pretty sure, because, good God, we make a lot of hooch out there. So, versatile as they are, shuttlecrafts can be modified to perform almost any task you need them to. From replacing your cargo hold and installing comfortable passenger seats, luxurious life support systems, and top-of-the-line grab plating, to butchering the hull, plasma, welding, and folding into mining drills. I mean, pretty much whatever you need. Spacers of the Terran Monarchy are perhaps one of the rare few who build their own expeditionary shuttlecraft, a true marvel of spaceship engineering design, those vessels sacrifice the spacious cargo hold in favor of large fuel capacity, weapons, and better sensor arrays. So, a big bomber without the bombs. Just a big, mean vessel. Uh, those are more often than not built by the youngest daughter of each spacer family. Really? Interesting. Alone, the child begins designing her ship in her early childhood, uh, procuring the funds or parts by working part-time uh, for their family members. After uh, completion, the design is tested in outer space, usually in some dangerous environment or even in a battle. Uh, the now grown-up daughter uses this very shuttle to explore Terran space in search of a husband. Well, interesting. I did not know that, to be honest. That's news to me. That says a lot about our women, doesn't it? Terran monarchy, uh, same as any other star state, employs shuttlecraft designed to accompany military units. Those military shuttles are armed with point defense turrets. Their hull is covered in armor plating, and more often than not, they also have high, uh, what is it, have energy shields. Yes, yes they do. Far from being a combat support vessel like the uh, sturdy dropship, which we'll talk about at a later time, a military shuttle is nevertheless invaluable uh, to any infantry unit or starfighter squadron of that matter. So, it's no doubt that they're going to have to have a lot of weapons and a lot of armor if they want their troops to hit ground. Well, boots on the ground, not the troops hitting the ground. That would mean they got shot out of the air. <laughs> uh, 
I got a story about that, but that's at a later date. Let's see. The Terrans equip their combat shuttles with top-of-the-line engines and boosters, ensuring that their craft faces something they couldn't handle. Uh, the ship will nevertheless be able to escape. Uh, often employed to ferry uh, ground pounders uh, between their mothership and the planetary surface below. Military shuttles are considered to be the tough workhorse of any fleet supply unit. Mainstream civil, uh, civilian models uh, produced by an infinite multitude of manufacturers around the galaxy have unsuccessfully tried for thousands of years to corner the most important market of all, uh, recreation. Let's face it. Let's face it, just honestly. Let's be honest. Uh, the common shellcraft is the equivalent of a caravan. In space, you have the freedom to visit not so distant solar systems. Your shuttle, cargo hold, packed full of camping gear. Or better yet, instead of that gear, a rugged sports car for an alien off road activities. Owning even the simple space shuttle can expand the range of activities one civilian in the galaxy can engage in measurably. During the centuries of exploring galactic deities, uh, citizens or deities, however you say the damn word, pastime activity companies have deployed special models called laser crafts. Now imagine if you would, you're reaching some distant planet by use of your own shuttle. You're hovering above the seas and lakes and you're fishing. Peace and quiet, perpetual bliss, as it were. It's just you, the home of your shuttle, and of course the fish swimming in the murky waters below. There's no one in sight. As a matter of fact, there's no one light years from you. Well, perhaps some pirate might pop up accidentally, in which case you got your trusty pistol. But then, or a friendly salvager. Uh, out there get on a special tourist who wander around in their shell craft and search for some peace and quiet. Basically, if you got yourself a laser craft, or just a shell craft you turn into a laser craft, you can make some pretty good money on it, or you can just disappear altogether. It's up to you. But, I guess that's something you're going to have to save up for when you're out of your service contract. Okay, that's all I got for today. So, have a wonderful day. You can go ahead and keep patting yourself on the back for a job well done on your tests. And I will see all of you next week. So study up on your previous material. Study up on this material. And you are dismissed.